Hey guys, it's me again, and I want to talk to you about how to start a home care business in the state of Tennessee. And a lot of you guys have been sending me a DM, and it's finally here. I'm finally ready to share with you guys. And this is a pretty, pretty simple, hey, thanks so much for joining. Thanks so much for joining. We're going to be talking about, hey, how are you, Minty? I can't wait to get you back on Zoom, how to start a home care business in the state of Tennessee. And let me put that topic here. I'm doing well. How to start a home care business in Tennessee, Tennessee. All right, so you just got licensed. Congratulations! I'm so happy for you. So one, um, first, where are my manners? Hey, everybody, this is Sean, aka the Savvy Business Chick, making sure you know your purpose and destiny in the marketplace. And I just so happen to share. Oh. Amazon delivery this late. <laughs> I just so happened to share um, my expertise uh, as I started my first home care business in 2006 and within two years grew it to a seven figure home care business with a pediatric focus in the DMV, which stands for DC, Maryland, Virginia. And shortly after I became a Got, I went on the board for the Maryland Department of Health, helping other home care agencies stay in co compliance. So that's how I first got started in cons consulting. I would go in and like just take over their office, make sure that their office was in compliance. And when I say compliance, um, if you're in a regulated state, you know that you have to keep, you have to continuously follow your rule, the rules and regulations or you can, hey, how are you? You can get in trouble. So, hey, hey, Marilyn. Yes, so uh, what I've been doing is I, um, hello, how are you? I have been helping most of you who have just been struggling to find information about your particular state. And I've been wanting to do Tennessee for such a long time. And let's just face it, guys. The home care industry, the home health care industry is a tight-lipped industry. That means that people aren't really talking. They aren't really sharing. Um, and I get a lot of you guys that tell me that all the time. Hey, how are you? Joyce Love Home Care. How are you? Intravitamin. Thank you so much. Um, they don't really talk. So you guys are getting frustrated and you're trying to go through these long applications all by yourself. And I'm just here to take some time to just make it more simple and plain. So if this is your first time joining me on a live, please don't make it your last. But I would like to know where you are watching me from. I did see one person from Maryland, so thanks for watching. If this is your first time joining me um, uh, on this live, please let me know where you're watching me from. If this is not your first time joining me live, then, you know, give me some love, give me some hearts, and we're about to get started. And, um, yeah, that's how, I, so I, so I can know how, um, how well you guys are hearing me. Was it? Hey, Texas, thank you so much for joining. Hey, Georgia, yes. Hey, Knoxville, Tennessee, all right, Texas again. Texas, we did Texas, um, some time ago. And we are coming back um, to re-review the, the requirements for Texas. So don't worry, you guys are on the list. And sorry, just like this weird glare. But you guys are going to just love the content. So let me get started. Now, one thing I will say that um, Tennessee, um, this particular informational video is for if you want to start a non-medical home care agency in the state of Tennessee. And one of the things that I do or someone on my team, we do regularly, 
but the lighting is kind of weird, is that we call the offices of these states and we actually talk to a live person. And I felt like I have somewhat of a gift of getting people on the phone because I was talking to a young lady uh, maybe a week and a half ago and she said, yeah, I was going to have this attorney do my my application and she's in the state of Minnesota and she said, yeah, he, he said it's going to take 12 months. Like I literally got on the phone, spoke to someone at the state. She was one of the reviewers of the application and she said, no, it's not going to take that long. And then I just basically went down all of the requirements. I tend to have a checklist per state that we will go over if you like ever join like one of my home care licensing programs. Sorry, get for the glare. And we will go over what is needed to basically get started and get your license approved very fast. So as you guys are seeing all of these testimonials, um, that I'm sharing either in my Instagram stories or on TikTok. Just know that one of the reasons why we're having such great success, at least the people that work with me, and I have people that work with me directly or they, they do my DIY, which stands for a do-it-yourself licensing program. It's a more budget-friendly for some of you who um, are not there yet to, hey, how are you? are not there yet to join my home care licensing program, but everybody's getting great results because the information that I'm giving out is, as they say, or they used to say, too legit to quit. So right now I'm gonna go over and I'm actually gonna show you guys the application. Now, please forgive me because I am using my phone because that's how TikTok is. It's kind of janky like that, you know, won't let me use my my um, computer but this is an application and I have to say that this is probably one of the most confusing parts about your state because if you've been looking for how to start a home care agency you probably went to the wrong application and so the first things first this is the application that you are going to be filling out and when I finish up this live I am going to do um i'm gonna have a link probably in my stories i'll i'll honestly say i probably won't have it until tomorrow where i will actually provide you with the application with the correct application that you need to use this is something that i want to do for you don't um, um because i don't want you guys to be struggling to find this information but this is what the application looks like Oops, sorry. So it's, it, this is the weirdest thing that the application that you'll be filling out is under the mental health and substance abuse services. And you're like, um, I will, this, this live will stay up for probably about 24, um, 24 hours. So, sorry. So look, this is a four page application. The application is pretty simple, right? So again, this will be you as a contact person to date. This is, you're a new applicant. Now you, you do have to understand that they put multiple licensing types on this application, but here, this is you. This is what you would basically be saying you are you are going to apply for it's a personal support services agency. No, this is not for California. I actually did one for California uh, about a month ago. And that training, you can catch that training. You can go to the link in my bio and get grab that training. This is for Tennessee, guys. Um, so that, so isn't that confusing? Look, this is the same application that you would use to do, um, like group homes and assisted living facilities. So this is like, sure, no problem. This is a really confusing application, but I want you to see that it's here, right? And you would not 
um, you would, this would be you as a director. So you would actually complete number five. So let me go back up. You can complete one, two, three, four, four, you're selecting this, five, and then this is pretty self-explanatory. If you are a personal support service agency, which you are, you're not going to answer questions um, 7 through 22. So here, you would just put 1. I'm going to skip down. You're going to skip down. Then 22, uh, you're going to put, this is going to be your descriptions of service, right? So even though it's personal service agency, you need to put a description of service of what you're going to be providing in the community to your clients. And then you are going to sign it, print your name, date, and your title um, in this instance is going to be executive director or president. Now, let me get into the requirements. That was just the application. Let me get into the requirements of what you have to submit with the application. This application can be mailed um, and you're going to get a fast response. Like literally one of my mentees, she mailed her application on Friday and she got word back from them on Tuesday. This state is moving fast. So... Um, similar to like a Virginia or Illinois, this state has a two-part process. Some states make you submit everything up front, but this state, they want the application and they, they want some of the requirements initially. And then part two or the second part of the process is where they ask you for your policies and procedures. So here are the other things that you will need. This will this will fall underneath requirements. You guys picking up what I'm putting down? Wait a minute, I'm looking for I lost one of my things. Oh. Okay, my son got a little bit. Okay, so you're, you're, it's called a, oh, you can hear me now? Okay, so the fact sheet, um, which is a form I'm going to um, provide you guys with, is actually the application, but they're calling it a fact sheet. So with that, um, you are completing it out as the agency owner. Then what they want is they you're going to have to do a criminal background clearance, but um, you don't do it yourself. You basically with the fact sheet, or let's just call it an application, you're going to submit a background information form, giving them permission to pull your application. They will um, actually um, schedule an appointment. They will pay for the um, criminal background clearance and um, all of the results will go to them. Then they get a, then it also is accompanied with another statement called, um, another form called the Non-Criminal Justice Privacy Statement Act. Both of those have to be submitted together. So here we got the fa fact sheet that is four pages. Then we have the background clearance information form, the Non-Criminal Justice Privacy Right Forms. So now we have three different forms. Then you're going to also include um, copies of your identification. So that is your driver's license, um, your state driver's license, your social security card. You're gonna submit that. An another, another requirement is that you 
will need to get general liability insurance. Now, the thing with the general liability insurance is that they don't have a actual um, minimum requirement. So some states say may say their minimum requirement is one million aggregate. And um, when I say one million, I don't want you guys to get all overwhelmed. Oh my gosh, I don't have a million dollars. No, that the just so just imagine you have auto insurance, and let's say like um say for example like one of my cars is a Porsche Cayenne. So my auto insurance covers up to like a hundred a ninety thousand dollar car, right? So. I don't pay $90,000 for my auto insurance, but that's how much it covers, right? So with you, so that's, so I would say at minimum, I would start with a general liability policy. That's around $250,000 to So, application or fact sheet, background check, privacy, two forms of ID. Then you're going to get your, um, you also need your liability insurance. Then we're going to add that you need um, three forms of references that are written. So, these are people in the community that are non-family members that are going to write you a reference. Um, and they need to be printed out um, and sealed, preferably, you know, basically um, testifying of your character and um, that they vouch that you have the ability and you should be allowed and approved to open up an agency. Um, next thing. Oh, that was for the. That was for one of the policies. And then lastly, you need to get, even though you can start your home care, this personal service agency in your home, yes, they do allow you to have a home office. Actually, it's called a personal support service agency. You will need to get um, from the county, from the courthouse, what's called like um, a certificate of occupancy, like, uh, that's just, you know, a form that you would most likely put up in your home, but they want to have proof of that. So those are the requirements initially. You guys have any questions on that part? Because then after you submit your application, they don't even have you pay initially. So you submit everything and then once they check off, okay, she's done everything, he's done everything, and they're also looking for your at your criminal background check, then they send you what's called an invoice. And it's very interesting that they do it that way. But I kind of like that they are not going to just take your money um, before they, they make sure that you are fit to operate of that kind of agency. So as simplified as the, the application is, the application fee is a hefty $810. So that's what you're going to be paying to the state. They send you a invoice. And then the second part of the application process is that you are required to come up with policies and procedures. Now I can give you some of the policies and procedures that um, you're gonna need to do policies and procedures on stuff like what is your admission criteria, um, things like what your discharge criteria, uh, you're gonna need to do a full description of services, you're gonna need to do a policy on your hours of operation, you're going to need to do an organizational chart. You're going to need to do a policy on um, elder abuse or um, reporting um, elder abuse. You're going to need to do a policy on complaints. You're going to need to do a policy on um, uh, your personnel. So you're going to need to do a couple of policies. They initially asked for six policies. 
but before they come out and then they said your other ones are due shortly after or within the year of you operating your business if you have an apartment you can still operate a home office um you said with the courts um this is now remember if they will approve you to have a they don't really like apartments because apartments have steps and a lot of times apartments have like that barrier where um you um you know they may have to get buzzed in or something like that hey amber oh you're more than welcome dr t but um what i say is if you can get the certificate of occupancy and they will approve it for an apartment um then go for it but um you might have you might be limited if you're in an apartment um but i i really feel like states that will allow you to have a home office start there i don't encourage anyone to run out and purchase a uh, office space if they don't have to you know why because um, for some states, you don't know how soon you're going to get licensed. So to make that investment, then, um, sure, I can tell you offline, Maureen, to make that investment, you should, um, you know, you really want to see the results sooner than later. Again, sorry for the glare. So that's. In a nutshell right there so let me let me share with you guys some fun things about the state that to encourage you and uh, so is there anyone on here that it lives in Tennessee um, that has been thinking about getting started um, starting a non-medical home care agency there are one two three four five Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. There are sixteen cities that have been highlighted as top cities in your state um, to start a home care a home care agency. Now, this doesn't mean that if you're not in these cities that you won't be successful no this is this just means that they have located a ton of seniors a ton of qualified um potential clients in these areas and i'm gonna show you guys this i said sorry for the glare bartlett tennessee chattanooga clarksville Cleveland, Colerville. I think I've done this before. Knoxville, Kingsport, Johnsontown, Jackson, Hendersonville, Germantown, Franklin. Of course, it's out of order. Memphis, Mumfrey, Mumfreesboro, Nashville, and Smyrna. Smyrna. Please forgive me. All right. All right, and so one more thing I wanted to share before I open it up for Q and A, and I'll allow you guys to ask me, you know, a few questions. Is if you've ever taken any of my marketing training, you guys know that I love, love, love to give you statistics, um, data, and this is pretty much a part of your market research. So if you are um, not used to uh share a photo video okay cancel if um you're not used to like market research then oops cancel trying to if you're not used to market research you may not know exactly how to use it right so um this is these are called chronic conditions right and so chronic conditions meaning 
that according to the CDC, because this is one of the places, one of the main places we got this information, this is what they are saying are some serious issues with the population in Tennessee. Number one is heart disease. So what does that mean? There's a lot of people in Tennessee that are having heart attacks. There are a lot of people there that are having, um, you know, that are either they're having heart attacks or they're at risk of for heart attacks. So that would that could potentially be an ideal client for you who needs home care, who could use some assistance with you know meal planning. Um, depending on if they did have a, a heart attack, they may have may need assistance with going back and forth to their doctor's appointments. Uh, number two cause of uh, cause of death and chronic condition in Tennessee is cancer. There's a lot of cancer patients there, um, and it doesn't necessarily list the different types of cancer. But I do have a cancer care marketing training that teaches you how to go after individuals that who. Um, so the, the three different things, three different ways that you would assess someone who has cancer is that um, during treatment, like, you know, taking them back and forth to their appointments, a lot of times they're very fatigued. Um, they need that assistance. They need that companionship. Someone who may be going through radiation um, that will fall underneath treatment as well. So you have someone that's getting transferred cancer treatment then you have someone that's uh that had a surgery and so they would need some support post-surgery and then you have someone that has been given like you know a couple of months of or a period of time to live and so that would be cancer care mixed with like end of life care um next and i'm just going to do two more um, there is a, a, several incidents that um, that could be car accidents, that could be workers' compensation, work work related incidents. There's a high number of individuals in the state of Tennessee who um, die or who need uh, assistance because of accidents. And I'm not just making this up; like this is literally on the Tennessee statistics. Uh, you see, I skipped over COVID, but this is here. So, I know you're like, ah, everybody can have an accident. No, basically, this state is basically saying there was a high level of accidents compared to other states. And so, that's how it's now number four on this list, because that's compared to other states. And so, what we do with statistics is that... Um, it helps us with planning, helps us with creating a marketing campaign, helps us with doing a strategy because most of the time, if you, you haven't worked with someone like me, you're just going to go and copy paste what, what another successful home care agency is doing. Oh, I'll just do exactly what they're doing, but it doesn't really help you stand out. You stand out by having programs. You stand out by knowing how to target specific groups. And if you got, if you got ten, like I say, say for example, ten cancer patients on rotation. I was gonna get my use my cal calculator. I'll do that a little bit later. Um, I'll sh give you guys a breakdown. But um, the the two afterwards. Uh, Leading causes of death and top chronic conditions also in Tennessee is stroke, which requires a lot of rehab and Alzheimer's dementia. And we know that it, you know, that stage, um, they, they need a lot of support, whether it's the family caregiver that's taking care of them or the actual person. So, if I was advising you and you wanted to work with me, I would say, oh, you know, get let's get licensed and let's immediately start, um, you know, marketing people with cancer and marketing to people uh, who um, have Alzheimer's disease. One is going to be a little bit more short term, short term, maybe the cancer uh, individuals with cancer, 
uh, only need inter um, intermittent services, maybe uh, after three months, they're moving on, depending on what stage they're on. But someone with Alzheimer's or dementia, uh, they're going to need care uh, more frequently. It's going to continue to grow. That need is continuing to grow. So I'm going to have one that's more long-term, one that's more short-term. It could be very, very easy to make, you know, at least $50,000 a month um, with that kind of client, with those kind of clients. That could be as little as 10 clients like that. Uh, I want you guys to keep in mind that when I made $3.2 in revenue, I had 13 clients. 13 clients. So sometimes you might think, oh, yeah, I'm going to have to have all these clients and all these caregivers, all these uh, aides. But sometimes one client may have like 12 hours a day, seven days a week. So you really don't need as many clients as you think. The Lastly, um, you will be able to apply to be a Medicaid provider with this license. So that's another good news or good um, feature about this state and this license type but there tends to be a lot of individuals who are willing to pay out of pocket that's also called private pay to utilize your services so tennessee is looking like a really good state um i average that or i promote that if you want to work with me and go through my home care licensing program where we do one-on-one mentorship uh, we go through the application together um, i help you submit it we we customize and do your policies and procedures we also give you a, other trainings on how to do your recruitment how to run your personnel or hr department how to get clients <laughs> um how to get clients we we create your marketing material for you we do a, a lot of things um, and we, we walk you through it and we walk with you uh, until you're licensed and then give you some support after you're licensed so that you're fully functional um, as a home care agency and well on your way to being super, super or as they say, stupid successful. So that is my spill on um, how to start a home care business in the state of of Tennessee. I'm getting all kinds of um, chimes right now. I got one of my one of my home care ooh, one of my home care mentees is probably emailing me right now. So if you guys don't have any other questions you don't have any other questions then I will so many so many then I will make sure oh I miss some of you guys that joined Okay. Do you have any other questions? All right. So we'll keep this up for probably about 24 hours. And then what's the billable rate for Medicaid? I don't have that amount for Tennessee. Just know that Medicaid tends to be low, lower than what you would want to charge. You have one? Maureen, are you thinking about Tennessee now? You trying to skip over New Jersey? We got to talk. Oh, yeah. It definitely can help people with no experience. New York. New York has a, um, uh, uh, what they call, moratorium on the license. And so they're not offering any licenses. You can go over to my friend Carl talks about it all the time. Um, so, so with if you're in New York, actually I've, ha I've helped three people in New York get licensed in Connecticut because Connecticut is a very, is, it's almost similar to Tennessee, very easy to get licensed in. And um, you can even become a Medicaid provider. Thank you, you're in North Carolina. Yes, we help people in North Carolina as well. You want to expand to Tennessee? Oh, that's a really great, that would be a great move. Tennessee, like I said, is a very low requirements, low requirements, um, uh, fast approval. 
You can get people on the phone. Um, my current mentee that we submitted her application last week, she has people literally waiting for her to um, complete her application. I mean, just imagine that if, if you knew the people were waiting for you, she's in the Memphis area, and these people are paying privately. So today we... Today we did a one-on-one -on -one session for almost an hour and a half, about an hour and a half, and we developed several things on her marketing campaign. So um, I do have a DIY program for Tennessee that stands for do-it-yourself, and that includes all of the policies and procedures, and it, it will include a little bit um, further... Um, walk through the application and then you can submit it on your own as as they say you can do it all by yourself um, that I have that and then I have the other program which is my home care licensing program that um, has definitely um, birthed a lot of successful home care CEOs you guys can see my reviews on Google you can see my um, client reviews on TikTok, or like I said, I post them to my stories. Um, I post them on TikTok and to my stories mostly. I mean, one of my mentees, she got licensed, I would say the end of, um, end of June, and she's already gotten two new referrals. And we had to slow down her marketing campaign, um, because, um, we got to play catch up with her getting some more caregivers. So um, with my experience in, um, in starting a skilled home care agency, I definitely know how to help those who are non-skilled as well. So if you would like to know and learn a little bit more about my um, home care licensing program, send me a DM. My calendar is currently pretty full right now, but that's because I actually talk one-on-one -on -one to people. I don't have someone on my team talk to them. I talk to them myself. And so whether or not the person wants to work with me or not, I get, I try to, I take 10 minutes. I answer as, as many questions as I can. And then I basically, um, give you as as much good information so you can make a very um, strong decision about what you want to do. Um, thanks, good to know. What about New Jersey? New Jersey, um, New Jersey is a good state. Um, I have a mentee there, and Maureen, when she gets her act together, this one here, she'll be the next one um, that um, is having some good success there. Um, and that one, she actually bought a franchise and wish it, wish she didn't cause she has 15 clients now and you know, she's like super, she's super busy. Um, uh, she has mostly Medicaid, but she can also do private pay. So, and she does a non, she does a non-skill. Pennsylvania is a good state. Um, it depends on what part of Pennsylvania that you are in um, if you want to get started in Pennsylvania um, right now because I do I'm very transparent I will tell you that if you're in the Philadelphia area then um, it is a bit crowded there and the Medicaid um, enrollment will be a little bit more challenging to you um, because they're not accepting any new providers in that area their Medicaid tends to go by county in PA, more so by statewide, like other states. Um, New, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut. If I had to choose between the three, I would choose Connecticut first. I would do New Jersey second and Pennsylvania third. Now, the easiest ones are Connecticut and Pennsylvania. Connecticut first, Pennsylvania second, with the easiest. The most, uh, a little bit more work is New Jersey. How do you get in my one-on-one -on -one mentoring? Please send me a DM. And uh, I do have two different kinds of mentorship programs. I have a home care licensing program 
that where I am your personal mentor for six months. And then people say, well, what happens after the six months? I'm still there. Believe me, I am. I'm still checking on people. But that's, a, that's, that's uh, and then a lot of times people will join my um, home care CEO mentorship program. So my home care mentorship program is um, one-on-one. And then my home care CEO program is more of a group with some one-on-one um, every month. Virginia, um, I'll go over Virginia. I definitely know Virginia like the back of my hand. I've helped skilled and non-skilled in Virginia. It's a little bit too too much to go through Virginia in this um, live, and I like to keep it clean. This is going to be only for um, uh, Tennessee, but Virginia is um, Virginia is a really good state. Um, I have one mentee within a year and a half. She was already doing like three hundred thousand um, on private pay only. Please explain non-skilled and non-skilled. Sure, I think that's a good question. Skilled um, is a service where you're if you're a home care agency you would have a registered nurse or an LPN, licensed practical nurse. Um, and then in some cases you could use um, certified nursing assistance for that. But most of, the, most of the time, skilled home care utilizes nurses. Why? Because nurses who are registered or licensed are the only ones that can um, follow doctor's orders. So if you have a skilled agency, you depending on what state you're in, you definitely have to have a registered nurse on uh, on staff. Um, most of the time, that would be full-time, and you can only provide care under the guise of doctor's orders. Non-skilled, depending on what state you're in, you don't always need a registered nurse. Like Pennsylvania, they don't require a registered nurse. And then um, you would you would be able to do things like personal care, homemaking, running errands, going grocery shopping, cooking, cleaning, um, helping helping that person get dressed, um, providing providing company or companionship to them. So a lot of people choose the non skill because um, uh, it's needed by a lot of our seniors. It's needed by veterans. It's needed by people with disabilities, and um, there are, are there are different pockets of every state where there's just a larger population of people that fall in that category. Is there a hold on services in DC? In a way, yes, they just actually came out with a new service um, type. And DC, even though I'm in the DMV, DC is a bit of a challenge because DC makes you have an actual commercial office space. So they don't mind if you're out if you're out of state, but they want you to have an office space. Uh, among other things. So thank you guys so much. As you can see, I probably look a little bit tired. I've been up. I've done I did a did a home care session with one of my mentees in um, Tennessee. Then I did a Medicaid enrollment Zoom with one of my mentees in Pennsylvania. And so because I do a lot of one-on-one for people in my mentorship, then uh, they have my undivided attention. You're more than welcome. And Maureen, please text me because we got to get you back. We got to get you finished. And thank you guys so much. Again, this is the Savvy Business Chick. Making sure you know your purpose and destiny marketplace. And if you aren't weren't already following me, please do follow me. And um, I hope you like it here. And turn on notifications so that you know the next time that I'm going live. Because I do go live um, as often as I can. Thanks so much. Bye.